Why the hell would you take a piece of trash that was infested with bugs and drive it to Las Vegas? Learning from an expert. I took a class with the legendary woodturner named Jimmy Clues. In this project, we used everything from a chainsaw to a chopstick and even lit it on fire at some point. By the end, it's an heirloom piece. But it's not always about the object. It's about the experience. And that's what this video is about. At this point, it was prepared enough to bring to Jimmy's shop, except for the fact that it sat here for a couple of weeks, and during that time, it got infested with bugs. Jimmy's been quoted as saying, my energy comes from those around me. When I can stir the creativity of one's mind, that for me is very satisfying. I want to raise the bar and create an awareness of an art form that has been virtually unknown to most people. Except he says it in a British accent because he's British. Bring this teal's dog off and screw it on tight, okay. real tight, okay? That should be okay. That's giving you a little bit extra support. Your first cut is to screw this up using a bevel. Big boy. No, nope, that one. The tool in that position. That bevel. Okay. It's parallel to the cut you're making. Speed-wise, turn the speed down, turn it on. Safety glasses only because there's bits of bar. The biggest difference between a master wood turner and whatever the hell you'd call me is that Jimmy seems to be able to push a smooth curve in one pass. As a novice, I find myself sanding a lot more, and certain stances and, and techniques are difficult for me to get a good result from. Jimmy's been turning wood for a long time. He's turned all over the world, getting symposiums, being recorded. But most of those videos don't really represent Jimmy's personality. For example, instead of saying, the sign of a good wood turner is to have the smooth surface coming off of your tool. He'd tilt his head and he'd say something like, that's as rough as a badger's ass, mate. Go to 60 grit. But remember, this is a turning class and not a sanding class. I just learned better from that type of instruction. It also helps that this guy has literally mastered his craft and can tell you 14 ways that something won't work and show you six ways that it will. It's such a good way to learn. Another tool lost its edge because of the dirt in this piece, but the dirt also supported certain areas that became voids later on, so we had to sharpen a lot of tools. Well, just be careful. I'll help you do it. I want to see. This is a bit of a challenge, this one. To get something out of that. Down, well, no, down the smooth. You're going to pick a lot of this stuff out in the end. Moment of truth. Figure out whether the last hour's been working or not. <laughs> this is a little scary. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Set you up and then you're going to start to hollow to the line that I put on me. Are we 
we doing carbide again or no? Yes. Absolutely. It turned into a collaboration between me and Jimmy where I brought the inspiration and he brought the skills. He's getting a tan, a yeah. permanent tan. There's purple and pink stuff. The darker stuff will darken and the light stuff will be I've never worked with cherry. such a nice way to see if you need glass finish on it. It's just generally pretty easy to work. Unless it has squirrely grain. So, yeah. I get to learn from multiple sources with my dad and my uncle there. I can hear what Jimmy has to say for them and collaborate on ideas. This project started as a literal pile of trash. I cut it up and then I drove it to another state where Jimmy's shop is, Las Vegas. I was able to level up my skills and understand what it takes to create a finished piece from essentially trash. And I got to do this over the course of a couple of days with my dad, my uncle, and a legendary wood turner. That's a great way for me to spend four and a half hours or so. Thanks, Jimmy. I just realized what I should call this bowl. I'm gonna call it the Badger Bowl in honor of Jimmyisms.